Flexcom PSP42 is a delay unit, but it also excels a ton as a clipper because the feedback path has a clipper built in. And PSP is known for their, uh, their analog modeling. It sounds really good. They're really good at making plugins sound like real analog gear. So using this as a gain stage can actually be a really powerful option compared to some other plugins that might just multiply it by a number and just call it a day. And that's, that's the way they do gain. So let's take a look here at why this is so cool. So I have here a spectrogram before, a spectrogram after, so we can compare the spectrums in real time, and also an oscilloscope to show us what's going on with this sine wave, and then we'll look at a saxophone. So here's the sine wave. Let's go, let's turn off the, the PSP42. So just pure, if we turn it on, even with like the settings basically turned off, or let's just, let's just switch this to input. We have the inputs match. I'm going to switch that back though to just the delay signal. The reason I'm doing this is so that we only have the delay signal to work with and this gives us access to the feedback path. Now, the Lexicon PSP42 does some stuff with the sample rate. It's actually got a variable sample rate and we can control that sample rate between half and 1.5 times, and you can control it even further with this delay button over here. Uh, we're not gonna be taking advantage of that, but as a result, we're gonna get some harmonics that appear here. That will give us some color options, especially as we start to push things. So I'm going to have this on, plus I wanna use the feedback to push the gain that extra little bit. So if I now turn up the input, we can sort of observe what happens to the sine wave. I'm gonna be turning down the, oh, uh, you know what? I'll turn down the output here so we're doing like actual gain staging, but let's go ahead and see what happens. So we see though, these harmonics, we now have these harmonics here and they've gotten brighter, they've gotten stronger. Not surprising, that's what you know distortions do. And this is just part of the analog modeling that the Lexicon PSP42 brings with it. We can push this even further though. The saturator that exists in the plugin exists in the feedback chain. So by dialing up the input, we hit it, but by dialing up the feedback, we can hit it again and again and dial it up a lot more. Now, of course, we, we have a delay of zero, so it's really just gonna act more like a, a bigger gain knob for us. So let's go ahead and try it out. And you can see we get a lot more high harmonics in exactly what that looks like to the wave. So it's not hard clipping, it's more like a soft clipper, but you're able to drive things pretty well with it. Now you could try messing with uh, the sample rate and some other things here, but this alone opens up the possibility of using this as a gain stage. So let's try doing it with something a little fancier like this saxophone. So I'm gonna bring the feedback down and the input, I'm gonna control click to bring it back down to zero and the input, I'm gonna bring it back. I'm sorry, these are Unity. I'm gonna put them at Unity. I'm gonna leave the delay where it's at. So we already know that feeding the saxophone in is gonna get some really light harmonic stuff from uh, just having the delay at the position it's at. So if I hit play, it'll, it'll go through, and I just wanna walk you through this, this particular setup here. It's imperative, imperative, important. It's important that this is at zero, right? So that we don't have any like echo or delay or phasing, flanging, all those kinds of things. We're not gonna have any of that. It's just gonna work sort of like a big gain knob and our sample rate's left where it is. The rest of the stuff, if those two controls are where they are, should pretty much play out how we would expect it. So let's go ahead, let's hit play, and we'll, we'll put ourselves here at the beginning, bring back our uh, view here. So it's how it's very similar, and it looks very similar. We know there's actually technically a difference there, but it's a pretty hard difference to hear. And by the way, I should say, if you're listening over headphones, this will be a lot more pronounced than listening over to speakers, even if your speakers are in a great space. Uh, it, it's just way more clear what's going on space-wise if you have some headphones on. Because this is gonna bring up with it a lot of other stuff. Sometimes we're not gonna want all this other stuff 
coming up with it. Things like breath noise, key noise, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but I just want to show you kind of what we can do with this. So now as I bring up the input, we'll see it pop up up here. So first let's dial the input all the way up and bring the output down until we're gain matched. Let's do a before and after, see how close we are. That's pretty close. I might even bring it up a smidge. It might even be worth just a touch more. Somewhere in that neighborhood, right? Okay, so we've brought it up quite a bit and we could see a massive difference in the high end. There's a ton more high end now. Just see how this is sort of faded out. Where is that spot at? Let me keep this from disappearing too. Faded out, kind of gone. This is much brighter. And we can emphasize it further by bringing up the feedback to push it just that much, a little much harder. And you can hear, now at this point, we need to bring this down, right? So you can see what I'm saying, especially if you're over headphones, it brings up a lot of extra stuff. This extra little push with the feedback brings a ton of additional stuff into play. And this could be really cool or it could be really bad, you know, depending on what you're mixing for, what you're trying to do. Uh, I think it sounds pretty dang friggin' cool. And we could sort of dial it back and bring our output, adjust our gain a little bit until we find the exact mix, the exact color that we want. In my mind, the way I see it is we have our original gain stage with the input output. The feedback allows us to gain stage again, but this gain stage acts a lot more like a color knob than anything else. And then we would have to adjust our output again one more time to gain match it the before and after so that we can make a true comparison. So let's go ahead. I'm going to make it like, let's bring this way down and bring this all the way up. So we actually have to bring this up. A little more. Somewhere in that neighborhood, right? But you can hear the massive difference in tone. We're clipping it. It's, it's being run through a really aggressive soft clipper. And it just opens up the door. This is just on a sax. It's one example. I'm pushing it really hard so that it's really obvious. Uh, but it could be a cool way to bring up gain in an analog emulated kind of a way rather than just using the fader every time. If you're looking for a color way of doing it, maybe you have you know two copies and you want to make a variation on the second copy just to keep things interesting. This is an option. It's a really cool option. This exists with pretty much any plugin PSP does, but with the delay in particular, uh, because of the feedback path and the way it does sample rate type stuff, it just opens up the door to more colors, which in my mind is the reason why you would grab this over maybe one of the other ones. If you have any questions about this, feel free to let me know, subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day. Thank you.